I want us to go back a little bit. This identity crisis that a lot of Africans suffered from, of course, you made mention of uh, colonialism, and of course, there is also slavery. Basically, the, um, the Ekata with Europe have a lot of effort with it. Okay, now let's go beyond that. Before we encounter Europe, European, who brought us this bad luck, who conquered us and therefore turned us into POW, and they use us the way they want because we are not be able to rise from that dust. How was our identity? What can you say reg regarding our identity as a people? Okay, um, um, that's an interesting question. To understand um, the nature of the African identity you know, prior to the Europeans, of course, you, you're gonna have, go, have to go back to history and uh, to go back to archeological records because that is, uh, it's, it, uh, it's, yes, it's true that majority of what we have in history you know, have been lost. And uh, mostly what we have today, uh, the things that uh, uh, even some Europeans had to document. But let's do a sample of the archeological records from what we have from a few, you know, um, um, archeological records and historical uh, 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 trappings. So you look at the likes of Egypt. Uh, you look at the, 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 the likes of uh, the, the guy from Mali, what's his name? Mansa. Uh, Mansa Musa. Uh, yes, Mansa Musa. So majority of the civilizations, if you look at majority of the African there were in, in, in pre-colonial era, majority of African nations, some we had only few empires. We had the empire that was run, that was run by Mas Musa. We had uh, also uh, kingdoms like uh, the, you know the Egyptian dynasty empires like that. So those were the major empires. And if you look at how societies function, how societies are structured, you find out that uh, there are empires, there are kingdoms, there are chiefdoms, chiefdoms, and then before you get to the level of tribes, you know, tribal and then ethnic level of groups. So you find out that these are the different levels, cadres of organization. So, an empire is much larger. It covers a huge expanse of land and, of course, many population, all of that. And then you, 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 you also look at um, kingdoms. Uh, kingdoms are much larger than chiefdoms. And then chiefdoms are much larger, of course, than tribes. And then tribes, before you get down to the very basic level of groups, and then all of that. So if you look at those civilizations, you will find out that history, archaeological records actually show us that these people were well advanced in their civilization, at least by judging from what was obtainable at the time. They were way advanced in their civilization and they were progressing at a rate that was stable, based on their civilization. So you look at the illustrious work of course, look at the works, uh, the Egyptian pyramids and, uh, and, and the archaeological uh, 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 splendor that has been discovered from what the Egyptians left behind. And if you come then even to the very local levels and even the tribal levels of here in Nigeria, let's say the Duduwa Kingdom and all of those dynasties and kingdoms, you find out that there's been a lot of documentation of an advanced and intelligent civilization. So now, the question now becomes, some people will ask, hey, yeah, but why was, that, why was it that these people did not advance to become you know, really uh, advanced like the Europeans and, and developed the capacity to be able to wage the war against the Europeans and not allow the Europeans to dominate them? That the very fact that the Europeans dominated the Africans uh, means that Africans are quite lower and um, we had a less sophisticated civilization. But that is not the question, because if you understand, if you take time to study the history, evolutionary archaeology and uh, the, the, the history of the Africans, 
and actually the history of the world, human race, hum how we have actually progressed, then you find out that if we have been left on our own, two things would have, been, would have happened. Either we went into extinction because we are not able to develop an intelligent civilization, intelligent enough for us to keep surviving, or we would advance to the level that will get an advanced civilization that will make us successful and prosperous. Now, in hindsight, we cannot know that in, 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 in cold facts because the developmental process was truncated. But what we can know, what we know is that the Egyptians we are so advanced in their civilization that the likes of Socrates and Thales and even uh, uh, Asian philosophers, most Asian philosophers, even Augustine and many of them had to travel from their parts of the world to Africa in order to learn from what was happening. So by the very fact that this level of civilization was actually in place, that shows you that there was a level of sophistication, writing, and or, um, many other technologies that we had developed, that level of sophisticated civilization could not have gone into extinction without itself birthing in a better civilization that would uh, grow as an offshoot from there. And this is just about the Egyptians. We've not talked about the other civilizations, well intelligent and sophisticated civilizations that were existing in the sub-Saharan part of Africa, which were all languished and obliterated by the incursions of the Western civilization. Now, why the, now the question becomes, why was the, what the West most developed the sophistication and the technology to be able to come and conquer the Africans? I don't know if you would permit me to go into that, but I, please, I think- Please go, please go. They are all very important here. Yeah, so, so why was that? Why were they able to do that? So a lot of things came into play. If you look at, the West, you find out that if you study the history of the world and the map of the world, you find out that, of course, the first set of humans, Homo sapiens, originated in Africa. And then Homo sapiens being an, a species that was quite inquisitive, that was quite curious. I think curious is the better word. Actually traveled and migrated from Africa to Europe and other parts of the world. Now in Europe, the environment in Europe, geographical factors that included the kind of animals that were in place, the specific kind of plants that were in place and the nature of the nature in which the communities, the different groups of homo sapiens that settled in Europe, how they clustered around each other actually precipitated the development of a civilization that is sophisticated enough to conquer and to dominate. So what do I mean that? Let me make this clearer. For a civilization to actually become sophisticated, for a civilization to come into place, few things have to be in place. The first one is that they, be, they, they have to be able to develop their own food and they have to be able to develop a technology that will enable them to conquer their environment. So they have to, first of all, be able to domesticate their own food and then domesticate further more animals and develop tools that will allow them to control their environment. So now, this was something that really happened very fast for the Europeans, courtesy of the peculiarity, the, the, the I would call it the piteous peculiarity of their environment. 